Rob, is everything working? Nothing's working. Our, our Zoom's at least working. The Zoom's that's working, good. but that's important. Hey, FYI. So we have microphones and Zoom. We have microphones and Zoom. Rob, is everything working? Nothing's working. Our, our Zoom's at least working. The Zoom's that's working, good. but that's important. Hey, FYI. So we have microphones and Zoom. We have microphones and Zoom. Rob, is everything working? Nothing's working. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. Roll call, please. Yep. Kavanaugh is on Zoom, but she's not able to vote. Um, Corbin? Yeah. Cunningham? Davio? Du Bois? Here. Hearing? Here. Jones? Here. Hinville? Here. Kennard? Here. Rieger? Here. Reuter? Is on Zoom. No, he's not. He's going to mess with me. <laughs> Roberts? Here. Shorts here. Stepanski here. Stokes is absent. Fosberg here. Walrod Wicks here. Win here. We have 1351 votes present. Next item is an approval of the minutes. Is there anyone that has any corrections or problems or changes that need to occur with the minutes? Just there's no one that has any corrections or changes need to occur occur with the minutes. The minutes are approved. It's it's a change in Ro Robert's rules of order, so speeds it up a little bit. Uh, our next communication. <laughs> uh, we have a voucher payable report submitted by Finance Director Louie Ann Randall in the amount of $1,570,118.84. Uh, for communications, we received Madison County Occupancy Tax Report for October 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. Uh, we have the letter of appreciation from Chittenango Fire Department to Madison County EMS for services being provided. Uh, we have Corporate Compliance Annual Report for March 2024. And information on the 2024 local cleanup program from Madison County Department of Solid Waste. How's that? How's that? We'll uh, start our first public hearing community development block grant or micro enterprise grant uh, to have a motion to open the public hearing. Ivan, second, Joe. Do we have anyone here to speak for or against the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG Microenterprise Grant? There's no one here to speak for or against. They get a motion to close the public hearing. For Michelle, second from Kyle. All in favor? Public hearing is closed. We have about 30, 30 seconds for the next one. <laughs> Not really anything we can do with that's that short. Mm -mm. We, can, we, can, yeah. we, want, we can read that black proclamation or that might come up if it runs over, it runs over. Yeah, we five seconds here we got. <laughs> All right, so we have a public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, CARES Act for Small Business COVID Recovery. Uh, we have a, I have a motion to open a public hearing. Rhonda, second, from Michelle. Uh, anyone here to speak for or against the develop, Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, CARES Act, Small Business COVID Recovery? So no one here to speak for or against community development block grant CDBG CARES Act or small business COVID recovery. I have a motion to close the public hearing. Ban second from Kyle. 
All in favor? Opposed? Carries. We have Michael Kevel. Would you like to come up, please? He wants to recognize Diana Wilson. Usually we recognize employees when they are um, leaving service at the county or when they hit milestones. Um, we're recognizing Diana Wilson for neither of those reasons today. She started working at the county in 1980. She's been at working in DMV since 1982, over 40 years of service. And she was recognized not by anybody at the county, but by the commissioner of motor vehicle, um, Al Sturby and Joe Griffo reached out to the commissioner, made him aware of her tenure of service to the county. She's been the DMV deputy since 2005, and she is the cornerstone reason that we have the best DMV in the state of New York, and the commissioner knows that too. I get to enjoy the accolades at a lot of state functions because of the great work that she does. So directly from the Commissioner of Motor Vehicle himself, signed by Mark Schroeder, thank you for your many years of dedicated service to folks here in Madison County. Diana, you don't want to no words? Oh, jeez. <laughs> After well, something like that? I know. I, I've been through many changes and, and many different people, and it's the best. It's still the best, and we strive to make it the best so everyone will come to Madison County. <laughs> Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, no, we still have that. So we'll do the, uh, we have a proclamation recognizing, recognizing uh, Public Health Week is April 1st to April 7th, 2024, whereas the week of April 1st, 2024 is National Public Health Week. And the theme is protecting, connecting, and thriving. We are all public health. And whereas the Madison County Public Health Department's vision is a healthy environment, a community for all to thrive, and the department's mission is to protect, enhance the health of our community through partnerships, education, and high quality services. And whereas the department carries out its mission with respect, equity, integrity, collaboration, and community focus, and whereas the department's public health efforts help to protect, prevent, disease, protect against environmental hazards, prevent injuries, promote and support healthy choices and living, provide services and support the fam to families of children with special needs and respond to public health emergencies. And whereas strong public health systems are critical for sustaining and improving community health and development works of with local partners to carry out the 10 essential public health services. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Madison County Board of Supervisors that's hereby declare the week of 1 through 7, 2024, as Public Health Week in Madison County. Be it further resolved that Madison County Board of Supervisors commends Madison County Public Health staff as well as other partners who collaborate with public health for their work in helping our county residents live longer, healthier lives. This is very good. Congratulations to public health. Eric, you're going to come up and get this? Is that you? <laughs> or is it Jessica? <laughs> I'm not going to come back there with it. <laughs> 14. Yeah. Jessica, come up there? Or? No, Jessica. Congratulations. No, no speech? Bread. That's it. Loaf of bread. Okay. He wants a loaf of bread. It's a long story. 
<laughs> I heard about the loaf of bread. <laughs> uh, next time we have is it's eleven twenty-five. We have a public hearing to review of agricultural district two C for modification and recertification. Do we have anybody here, or can you have a motion to open the public hearing? Ivan, Joe, second. Do we have anyone here to speak for or against the review of the Agricultural District 2C for modification of re and recertification? There's nobody here to speak for or against the review of Agricultural District 2C for modification and recertification. Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Michelle and Kyle. Thank you very much. All in favor? Public hearing is now closed. Next item would be to the first resolution. I can do the first resolution. I'm do the first resolution. Okay. Uh, we have resolution one is a resolution of appreciation. We are recognizing Louanne Randall for completion of NYSAC County Government Institute. This is Pete Walrod, Chairman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to move this resolution for adoption. Do we have a second? At Rex. Thank you very much. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Congratulations, Luann. I saw you're hiding way back in the corner back there. <laughs> <laughs> very nice job. Next one. We'll go into our next resolution is the resolution of appreciation re retiree recognition. This is Pete Walrod, Chairman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. Do we have a second? We have a second. Kyle, all in favor? Opposed? Carries. We have uh Presentations here. We're going to bring up uh, Gary Strong, the sheriff's office, and present them again. Sure. Right. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sheriff. Yeah, Gary Strong. And sheriff. And the sheriff. Or just the sheriff? No. He's yeah, got new seating arrangements, huh? <laughs> Is everybody happy with their neighbors or no? <laughs> Can you handle that? No. Evan's the only one who got to keep her seat. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a huge loss for the Madison County Sheriff's Office. Uh, with the retirement of Gary Strong. Gary started uh, in corrections back in uh, 1999. He did about eight months before he went full-time uh, back in, in the correctional facility. Uh, he's worked in booking, uh, which you probably know a little about booking. They deal with everybody who's coming in fresh off the street, and it can be anything that you could imagine could happen in there. So, uh, you know, he did that for a while. He did transports, which is huge. Him at, uh, interacting with all of the legal professionals, with the attorneys, with the judges. It was a great representation of our office and and, and what we do in the Madison County Sheriff's Office. And uh, it's, it's going to be, like I said, a big hit. He did booking. He did inspections back in the jail, the inmate work program when we used to have it. Uh, you know, most of them now are, are categorized too much of a security risk to go out, but that was a good program. You know, when he did it, taught people how to work, taught, taught them how to get up in the morning. You know, a lot of the, of the people don't have that in society now. Somebody who, who has to teach them to get ready and uh, how many lives you probably changed doing that, Gary. And uh, I talked to my staff a little bit and, uh, you know, just things... Gary is a team player, and in law enforcement, that's how we get stuff done. It's, uh, you know, singled out, we're weak together, we're strong. It's one of the most important things in law enforcement that I try to teach to these other agencies also, you know, come together, work, and we'll get stuff done. And, and Gary was always like that back in the jail. They described him as quiet and never complaining. 
And when they said he did complain, you better listen because we got a big problem in the sheriff's office. So I thought that was great. Uh, another one, he never used sick time or, or rare, rarely used sick time. And my captain uh, Schneider over there is like, so when he called in sick, you knew he was sick. You know, he was down and out and a great example. And and most of all, just a, a great attitude that you brought to work. You you will be m missed uh, a, a great deal, Gary. And, uh, you know, like I said, if there's anything we can do, hopefully we'll get him to, to stay on his campus security uh, after he retires, too. So we'll 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 give his wife uh, a chance to get him out of the house for a while. But uh, would you like to say anything? Sure. <laughs> I told you he was a man of few words. So. Yes. Congratulations, Gary. Well done. Well done. I'll get that over there. Check, so. We have Teresa Snyder and uh, Commissioner Preble to come up, please. Good morning. Teresa Snyder has worked for Madison County for 25 years. Um, during that time, she has done a number of things, um, including casework um, and all sorts throughout social services department. But primarily, her main duty has been the Madison County Home Finder, um, which means that she has been solely responsible for recruiting, training, and maintaining all of our foster homes. It has been her job to place um, Madison County foster children into those homes to make sure they're taken care of and have everything that they need. As you can imagine, this often happens outside of the hours of nine to five, Monday through Friday. Nights, weekends, holidays, um, we're calling Teresa, asking her to get us a home for a, for a kid, a baby, a kid, a teenager, any child who needs, needs a place to stay. Um, and she has been fabulous at doing that. Teresa has also primarily been the main organizer um, and contributor to make sure that all of our foster children have Christmas gifts every single year. Her cubicle is often overflowing with games and toys and pajamas, scarves, slippers, sweaters, and it becomes quite a little store for all of the caseworkers walk, working with foster kids to gather up these things, wrap them up, get them, get them all set to deliver every Christmas. She does a fabulous job. Although she's going to be truly missed at Madison County Social Services, I am really excited and happy for her that she's off to new adventures to spend lots of time with her family. So, Teresa, what would you like to say? Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Congratulations to Teresa. <laughs> Sorry about that. Pete, I just turned it on. Uh, <laughs> our last public hearing is review of requests for additions to agricultural districts. Could I have a motion to open the public hearing? What, Rhonda? I have a second. Michelle? <laughs> is there anyone here to speak for or against review of requests for additions to agricultural districts? No one being here to speak for or against the review of requests for additions to agricultural dis districts as for a motion to close the public hearing. Ivan, Kyle, all in favor? Public hearing is now closed. And we move on to our resolutions. Agenda. Now that all that's out of the way. Moving forward with Government Operations Committee, resolution number three is reappointing members to the Ethics Advisory Council. Number four is amending the corporate compliance plan and certain policies. Number five is amending the Madison County Vehicle Fleet Policy and Procedures. Number six is amending the wage rates for non-represented employees in the blue collar unit. 
job titles, policy, and procedures. And number seven is designating an acting director of solid waste management. This is Pete Walrod, Chairman, Government Operations Committee. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I move these resolutions for adoption. Do we have a second? Kyle? Any discussion? Roll call, please. Corbin? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Davio? Yes. Du Bois? Aye. During? Aye. Jones? Kinville? Aye. Kennard? Aye. Rieger? Aye. Ruder? Aye. Roberts? Schwartz? Here. Yes. Stepanski? Yes. Vosberg? Yes. <laughs> Walrod? Aye. Wicks? Yes. Wynn? 1,414 votes. Approved. Okay, moving forward with our Finance, Ways, and Means Committee preferred agenda. Resolution number eight is authorizing chairman to enter into an agreement with the New York State Division of Criminal Justice Services. Resolutions nine, 10, and 11 are all modifying the 2024 adopted county budget. Nine is for corrections. 10 is for sheriff's office. 11 is for CAD system. And we are going to pull resolutions 12 and 13. This is Matt Roberts, Chairman, Finance, Ways and Means Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move these resolutions for adoption. Thank you. Do you have a second? Michelle or uh, Melissa? Thank you. And discussion? Roll call. Roll call vote. There was echo up here. Roll call vote, please. Yes, and I left you notes. <laughs> Cunningham? Aye. Davio? Yes. Du Bois? Aye. During? Aye. Jones? Aye. Kinville? Aye. Bernard? Aye. Rieger? Aye. Ruder? Aye. Roberts? Schwartz? Yes. Stepanski? Yes. Bosberg? Yes. Walrod? Aye. Wicks? Yes. Wynn? Yes. Corbin? Yes. 1,414 votes. Approved. Our Criminal Justice Public Safety Committee's preferred agenda, resolution number 14, is authorizing the chairman to enter into an amended lease agreement with Gorman Foundation for assigned counsel program. Number 15 is entering into an agreement with the Oneida Indian Nation for Jail Services. 16 is applying for New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services 2024 State Homeland Security and Emergency Services Program Grants. And number 17 is entering into an extension agreement with Krauss Associates for 911 phone system upgrades. This is Rex Vosberg, Chairman, Criminal Justice Public Safety Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move these re resolutions for adoption. Thank you. Do you have a second? Pete? Discussion? Roll call, please. Yep. Davio? Yes. Du Bois? Aye. During? Aye. Jones? Aye. Kinville? Aye. Kennard? Aye. Rieger? Aye. Ruder? Aye. Roberts? Schwartz? Yes. Stepanski? Yes. Bosberg? Yes. Walrod? Aye. Wicks? Yes. Wynn? Corbin? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. 1,414 votes. Carries. Our Highway Buildings and Grounds Committee, Resolution 18 is authorizing the chairman to enter into a lease agreement with Verizon Wireless. 19 is authorizing the chairman to enter into an agreement with Suit Coke Corporation for joint and crack filler and sealer. And we are pulling resolutions 20, 21, 22, and 23. This is Lauren Corbin, Chairman, Highway Buildings and Grounds Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move these resolutions for adoption. Thank you. Do you have a second? Dave, thank you. Any discussions? Roll call, please. Du Bois? Aye. During? Aye. Jones? Kinville? Aye. Pinard? Aye. Rieger? Aye. Ruder? Aye. Roberts? Schwartz? Yes. Stepanski? Yes. Bosberg? Yes. Walrod? Aye. Wicks? Yes. Wynn? Yes. Corbin? Yes. Cunningham? Yes. Davio? Yes. 1,414 votes. Carries. Our regular agenda resolutions, number 24 is authorizing the chairman to enter into an agreement with Barton and LeJudas for solid waste engineering services. This is Melissa During, Chairwoman, Solid Waste Recycling Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Do we have a second? Mr. Boyce? 
Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Resolution number 25 is authorizing the chairman to enter into an agreement with Pace Analytical Services for, for professional laboratory services. This is Melissa During, Chairwoman, Salad Waste Recycling Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. We have a second. Michelle, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Resolution number 26 is appointing a Board of Supervisors representative to Madison County Cornell Cooperative Extension Board. This is Evan Schwartz, Chairwoman Planning Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. Second is Joe. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. <clears throat> Resolution number 27 is adopting the recertification of Agricultural District 2C in the towns of Stockbridge, Smithfield, and Fenner. This is Evan Schwartz, Chairwoman Planning Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. We have a second. Alex, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Resolution number 28 is adopting the inclusion of certain parcels in predominantly agricultural land in certified agricultural districts. This is Evan Schwartz, Chairwoman Planning Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. Kyle, thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. And resolution number 20, 29 is the authorization to submit a grant application to the New York State Office of Community Renewal. This is Evan Schwartz, Chairwoman Planning Committee. Mr. Chairman, I move this resolution for adoption. Thank you. Do we have a second? Joe, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carries. Now we have a public comment period. Um, I apologize. I don't know exactly how to pronounce your last name, Susan, but uh, thank you for. How do you, how do you, when you get there, how do you pronounce your last name? Actually, it, it, I'm pretty accepting of Galbraith or Galbraith. And back when I was on the Board of Supervisors, I was Susan Waterstripe, which was much weirder. <laughs> Okay, my name is Susan Galbraith. I live in Lebanon. I'm a member of the Ad Hoc Committee to Save the Madison County Landfill for Madison County. As the former town supervisor, I have to say I'm angry with the Board of Supervisors even considering selling the future of the landfill to a profit-driven company that has a history of problems with similar deals. Let's remember that the purpose of a county-run department is to serve the public, not to make money. The purpose of a for-profit company is, well, I don't even have to tell you, it's to make money. Equally important, I'm offended by the approach that the board is taking to manipulate the public and win support for this misguided idea. The county's public information office has repeatedly pushed the message that tipping fees will rise, possibly as much as 30% if the landfill continues to be owned and operated by Madison County. And that may be true, but even a 30% tipping fee increase for haulers will have almost no impact on Madison County customers of those haulers. And I can prove that. I used H&R for years, $33 a month to pick up our trash and recyclables. They paid $88 a ton tipping fee most recently to leave those uh, the trash and recyclables at the landfill. Syracuse haulers bought out H&R and they have not increased the price. It's still $33, even though they pay 30% more, $114 a ton to leave our trash at the landfill. So there is not a direct relationship between the tipping fee and the price that residents pay. The tipping fee is only part of the hauler's cost and much less than their personnel, their equipment, their maintenance, their fuel. 
this is misleading to people in the county to represent this as important. Don't listen to scare tactics. Tipping fees really do not matter that much. They are only a small part of the hauler's cost of doing business. Now you're doing it again. Faced with citizen resistance to this bad idea, have you changed course? No, you hired Maurer and Associates from Syracuse to sell this plan. Maurer and Associates, a high powered marketing firm whose website proudly proclaims what they promise to sell, creating deep emotional connections between people and brands. There's a nice little heart and an animation on their website showing the deep emotional connection that they promise to create between people and brands. Well, folks, that I think is highly unethical. I do not want my tax money to create a deep emotional connection between me and a brand, any brand, and especially this short-sighted, ill-conceived plan. I am here to tell you, stop using propaganda tactics. Let's talk openly and reasonably about what has so been have one minute. and how to fix it so we can keep the landfill as a resource for the next hundred years. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Doug Holdridge. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the Board of Supervisors. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Doug Holdridge. I'm a former supervisor from the town of Lincoln. I sat where you sit now. I'm a former county solid waste and recycling committee member, a former landfill chief hearing officer, and a current town of Lincoln town board member. <laughs> Today, I speak to you as a spokesperson from the non-county associated ad hoc committee to save the landfill. A group of professionals and concerned citizens has presented to you folks a document outlining our research and recommendations to safeguard our county landfill. This is to save it from privatization. We advocate for keeping the landfill under the ownership of its true stakeholders, the residents of Madison County for the next 100 years, ensuring its sustainability. Last week, we mailed a copy of our findings along with a cover letter with hopes that you've had an opportunity to consider our concerns and recommendations. We also forward a copy to Cornerstone via email to Rob Holmes, who is the contact at Cornerstone, in the hopes that our insights could assist with a report to the county. We are available as a group to address any questions that might arise from both Cornerstone and you, the Board of Supervisors. Our document is now a matter of public record and therefore can be assessed by any interested parties or by contacting us directly. We appreciate the opportunity to engage in the process of determining the best possible solution for the challenges facing the landfill. It is crucial to adhere to the long-term management plan that was established years ago to address Madison County solid waste issues. Deviating from that plan would raise concerns and should raise concerns. We hope the Board of Supervisors shares our commitment and will thoroughly review our proposal. Again, we welcome any questions or concerns for discussion or comment. Thank you for your time and consideration in this critical decision. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I want to set a couple of things straight. Uh, the report that came from the group committee. Uh, we had, I had promised that it would be immediately sent to Cornerstone as soon as we received it by email. Uh, Doug can attest that it did get sent that same day because he was copied on the email. Uh, Mark made sure that that went. Uh, as far as Moyer and, and Associates, uh, 
prior to January 2nd of this year, we had failed as a board to keep the public sufficiently informed as to what was going on. We had failed to look at all the sources, all the potential possibilities that there were for us to for us to go down as far as the landfill goes. Uh, that has, that attitude has changed and Maurer and Associates is not there to color the, our actions of what we're doing or to try to hide anything. They're there to help us ensure that we keep in touch with the public, making sure that we let the public know exactly what steps we're going through to get to the end result. I keep on being asked, what is my position? Where do I stand? Well, I don't stand anywhere right now except for gathering all the data, gathering all the information and trying to make the best possible decision for Madison County and the citizens of Madison County. Thank you. And uh, any other business? Thank you. If there's no other business, can I get a motion to adjourn? Matt, Michelle, roll it. All in favor? <laughs>